absolutely. There's a there's a final tradition that we have in in hosting our our uh, fireside chats, and I normally try to do a literally a, a one minute or a one and a half minute review or summary of some of the key points that that we've discussed. So if if I may, I suppose we we started our conversation uh, really talking about how much engagement the coach has, and and I perhaps mistakenly framed it in terms of speaking. And, and I think the three of you concurred that if a coach is speaking more than about 10%, it might be a little bit too much. But actually, Stefani, you said that in some instances, a little bit more initially might be necessary in order to build and establish that foundation and that relationship. But I think all of you also concurred that a key part of the coach's job is to be present and, and Steve, I think you made the point that being present doesn't require you to speak, that actually being present is optimally achieved when you're not saying anything. So it's building that empathetic relationship through listening seems to be a key competence of the coach and of the coaching relationship. The 10% of time that you would end up speaking seems to be more focused on asking key questions to get to the bottom of what the coaching relationship is intended to be about. And Stefani, I think you made the point tellingly later in our conversation that being clear on what the purpose of the coaching relationship is, is of paramount importance because having that clarity then helps to maximally inform the nature and the content of the questions that are going to be asked. Um, so again, coaching is not something that has this preordained long list of typical questions. It's more about the skill and the aptitude of the coach to be able to build that empathy through listening with their coachee. Um, Steve, I think you, you introduced us to your, your personal core belief around our purpose in life and the idea of growth and the idea of love and that both of those can be fused together through the coach's, I suppose, use of the coaching relationship to show that form of love. It's a platonic love, but it's a love for the underlying individual. And then through that, to enable the growth, which is one of the overriding purposes. That kind of brought us into the, the international dimension where I put the question to you that from your experience, do national cultures have an impact on the coaching relationship? And, and probably the single biggest takeaway for me is that the three of you seem to concur that actually when you strip away all of the national boundaries, national cultures, national histories, we are all people first and foremost. And at our core, it doesn't matter where we've come from. It actually matters that we are people. And that connection to the, through the coaching relationship actually establishes fairly quickly and can transcend national backgrounds and national histories fairly rapidly. So I hope that has done some justice to a really interesting and in-depth exploration of coaching. Fad, fiction or the future, my vote says, actually, I think it has a pretty good future, certainly in your three very capable hands.